right, so we're going to talk about um, adding and subtracting rational expressions. On the last um, thing we worked on was multiplying and dividing rational expressions. So now we'll talk about adding and subtracting. Um, so let's get warmed up and just talk about regular old fractions. So yes, we're talking about adding fractions where you're going to need a common denominator. And uh, ideally, if I want to add 3 sixteenths plus 7 tenths, a common denominator that will always work is you can just multiply the denominators together and get 160, which is a common denominator. Ideally, though, and you're going to really see when we start working with, um, we start changing our numbers to algebra expressions, it's going to be really much more simple if we can get the lowest common denominator. So how would I do that? So if I were to, first thing I'm going to do is break down the denominators into all of their prime factors, prime numbers. 16 is 2 times 8, and 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So the one way to write 16 in terms of just prime numbers is it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or I could write that as 2 to the fourth if I want to. And then I want to add to that. 7 tenths, well, 10 is easier. That is just 2 times 5. So the way I can find my lowest common denominator is usually what we'll do is I'll just start with one of them. I'm going to take 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the fourth. And then I go to my second denominator. And notice I already have a 2 in there. I've got plenty of 2s. I've got four twos there. So I don't need a 2, but I do need a 5. So then I would tag on a 5 there. If you multiply this all out, we already know 2 to the 4th is 16 times 5 gives you 80. So my lowest common denominator here is 80 when you multiply those numbers all together. Now, you know the practice then. What I'd want to do is I need to make both of these denominators 80. And what's really nice about this is, you know, you could turn that into 16 and try to figure out what you need to do. But if you wrote it out like this, you can see the only thing missing from this denominator is 5. So I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by 5. Now here, 2, 5, I, have, that's, I, I need three more 2s. So I would multiply top and bottom by 2 times 2 times 2. And if we take it back to numbers, now remember, you just go straight across. This is really 15. We already know that this comes out to be 80. 15 80ths plus this is going to be 7 times 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, which is 56 80ths. And when we add fractions, we know we can keep the denominator the same, and we just add the numerators. So uh, 15 plus 56, 6 plus 5 is 11, carry the 1 is 71. So when we add these two fractions, you get 71 over 80. Again, I just want to point out that you if you wanted to, again, you could, a lowest common denominator is 160. So if another way to do this is if I just make multiply those together and think 160ths, how would I get that? I would multiply this top and bottom by 10. That gives me 160. This one top and bottom by 16. And 3 times 10 is 30. 7 times 16, oh boy, 16 times 7, that's 2, carry the 4, uh, 7, 11, it's 112. And if I add 30 plus 112, I get 142 over 160. And, and so the only thing is we want our fractions reduced. And perhaps you can see it, if you divide top and bottom by 2, you do end up with 71 over 80, the exact same uh, fraction we got here. But you can see the be much easier if I just work with the lowest common denominator, because usually my fraction will already be reduced. I don't have to pull out any common factors. Now, if that doesn't convince you, you start to get even more messy denominators. Like on number two here, I have 9 over 50 plus 4 over 15. If I just multiply these together to get a common denominator, I'm going to have a really large denominator, right? 50 times 15 is a big number. So this is why it's convenient and easier if you find the lowest common denominator.
Okay, so for 50, I'm going to break that down. 50 is 2 times 25. 25 is 5 times 5. So I know that uh, not 50 can be written as 2 times 5 times 5. Now I'm going to make it look more like how we're going to see it with algebra terms. That means I could write 50 as 2 times 5 squared. And then I want to add to that 4 over 15. 15 is just 3 times 5. So then I can make my call, my lowest common denominator. I'll start with this denominator. I have 2 times 5 squared. I go over to my second denominator. Well, I already have a 5. In fact, I have two 5s. The only thing that's missing here is a 3. So I'm just going to tag on a 3. My lowest common denominator is 2 times 5 squared times 3. You want to take it back to numbers. 5 squared is 25. 25 times 2 is 50. 50 times 3, this comes out to be 150. So then what I would do, I then you can work with 150 if you want, or I'd go here and say, okay, well, what's missing here from my lowest common denominator? The only thing missing is a 3. So I'll multiply top and bottom by 3. Over here, what's missing? Um, I have a 3. I have one 5, but I, I need two 5s and a I need another five and I need a two. So this one would get multiplied by two times five, which is just 10. That's the same as this. So then my denominator is the same. It's two times five squared times three, or we can go ahead and write that as 150. My numerator is nine times three is 27. Four times 10 is 40. 40 plus 27 is 67 over 150, which is already reduced. No common factors there. All right, so you see the next one. If you want, this is a good time to pause the video and try to combine these two fractions with the lowest common denominator. Okay, so then we'll, uh, 10 is two times five. 21 is 3 times 7. And so here, my lowest common denominator, I'll take my first denominator, which is 2 times 5, go to my second denominator, and I don't have either of those numbers. So I am going to need 3, and I'm going to need 7. My lowest common denominator then is 2 times 5 times 3 times 7, or 10 times 21. 10 times 21 would be 210. Now notice, and I, I don't want to discount that if there's no common factors between these two denominators, then yes, your common lowest common denominator will just be the product of your two denominators. Okay, so then this one's missing the three and the seven or the 21. This one's missing the two and the five, which is the 10. Whoops, <laughs> two times five, there we go. So then I have, this is nine times 21. 9 times 21, we can do that off to the side. Why does this keep? Okay, so 9 times 21, 21 times 9, 9, that is 18, so 189. This is going to be over 210. This is 2 times 10, so that's just 20. Uh, if you add 20, that's going to be 209 over 210, almost one. Okay, so now we've done it with numbers. Let's see how this looks when we start replacing our numbers with algebra expressions. But the idea is the same. If I want to combine these two fractions, the first thing I'm going to do is factor the denominator. So I've got seven. Best I can do here is pull out a three. That leaves me with x plus 2. And then I have x, and this is as simplified as it's going to be as x plus 2. My lowest common denominator then is going to be, I'll start with 3 times x plus 2. Go to my second denominator. I already have an x plus 2. So that's it. Nothing's missing. That is my lowest common denominator, which happens to be this denominator. So that means the only adjustment I need to do here is to get a 3 here. So I would multiply this one top and bottom by 3. So I'm going to have a denominator of 3 times x plus 2. And my numerator will be 7 plus 3x. 
And we'll see on some other examples, you might be able to cancel something, do some factoring, cancel something out, but don't, don't try to do something you know you can't do. This three cannot cancel with that because of the plus sign. Seven plus three X doesn't factor anymore. We're just gonna leave it like that. Okay. So here we have our two fractions. Let's factor the denominator. Two times X, two X plus eight, I can take out a two. That's two times X plus four. Here we have a difference of squares. X squared minus 16 factors into X plus four, X minus four. Lowest common denominator. I'll start with the two times X plus four and then go to my second fraction. See, what do I need to add? Well, I've got my X plus four in there. I just need an X minus four. So this and this both are in there. So that's my lowest common denominator. This one therefore needs to get multiplied by whatever is missing here, which is X minus four, top and bottom. We're multiplying by one, right? X minus four, or X minus four is one. I can't change the problem. I can only multiply by one. That's why I have to do top and bottom. And this one, we're gonna to multiply top and bottom by just the two. So then I have two times X plus four, X minus four in my denominator. And here we're gonna to have to multiply this out. We've been practicing this though. That's gonna give me X squared minus four X plus three X. Three times negative four is minus 12, minus four times two, so minus eight. If we combine some like terms, minus four X plus three X is minus X. Negative 12 minus eight is negative 20. And then what you should do to get this fully simplified, this looks like a trinomial that could probably be factored. And what I'm looking to see is if one of the factors is anything down here, I could cancel it out. So let's factor that numerator, x squared minus x minus 20. Two numbers that multiply to negative 20 add to negative one would be x plus five times, no, x minus five. Let's start over here. x minus five times x plus four over two times x plus four, x minus four, and there we go. We have a common factor of x plus four, so we could reduce this down further to just be x minus five. You can distribute the two in if you want, but it might as well just leave it in this form, factored form. Okay. Now we have, okay, well, some people would say I'm subtracting two fractions, but I would argue one is a fraction, right? One is one over one, that's a fraction if I wanna think of it that way. So I really have three fractions. Um, well, that's simplified. Minus 40 difference of squares, x plus five, x minus five, and then minus four over x plus five. You notice I sometimes leave room because I wanna give room if I need to multiply top and bottom by something. Um, what's my lowest common denominator? Uh, let's use this space up here. Well, one would be in every, any denominator. I don't really need to write the one because that's a factor of every number. But uh, between these two, I have X plus five, X minus five, and this goes into that evenly. So that is my lowest common denominator. So that therefore I'm gonna have to multiply one top and bottom by X plus five times X minus five, which is, okay, we know that's how a difference of squares factors. That is X squared minus 25, isn't it? So maybe I'm just gonna write it like that, x squared minus 25 for this one. This one that already has the right denominator because that is x squared minus 25. This one just needs an x minus five.
one big fraction. The denominators for all three is x squared minus 25. Or, you know, you, maybe it is better. I was just maybe doing that to make a little room. I, maybe I'll write it as, as x, minus five, x plus 5 times x minus 5. As we saw in the last one, something canceled out with one of these factors. So I probably should take it back to factored form. But as far as the numerator goes, I think I want to leave it like this. Um, because I'm going to have x squared minus 25 minus 40, and then minus 4 times x minus 5. I'll distribute here, combine some like terms. That leaves me with x squared minus 65 minus 4x, and then plus 20. Um, we'll combine those, so that's really x squared minus 4x, negative 65 plus 20 is minus 45. See if this factors. Factors, two numbers multiplied to negative 45, add to negative 4, I'm thinking negative 9 and positive 5, multiply to negative 45 and add to negative 4. So it's going to be x minus 9, x plus 5. I get a common factor of x plus 5 canceling out. So I have x minus 9 over x minus 5. This, okay, we're, we've seen two in a row now where there you get a common factor. It obviously doesn't have to happen, right? You, if you don't get a common factor, then we would just leave it. We'll see if we have one like that. I don't know. Okay, if you're feeling comfortable, maybe a good time to pause the video and try that one on your own. This one's about as bad as they get. Okay, so I'm going to jump in now and factor this. x squared minus 2x plus 1 factors into x minus 1 times x minus 1. I could write that as x minus 1 squared minus, here I factor out an x, it's x minus 1, plus x plus 1. Here I can take out an x squared, and then I have x minus 1. So lowest common denominator. I need, need two powers of x minus 1, right? I need x, x minus 1 squared. This one has an x minus 1. I already have that, but now I need an x. This one has an x squared, so I'm going to need another x. That'll be x squared, but I already have my x minus 1. So this is my lowest common denominator. Okay. That's the same as this. So for the first fraction, I want to multiply top and bottom by x squared. For this one, I'm missing 1x and 1x minus 1. For this one, it looks like all I need is an x minus 1, top and bottom. Get a whole lot of stuff. But it's all going to be divided by x squared times x minus 1 squared. It looks like I have 2x squared minus, okay, this minus 1 times x, let's just write this as minus x times x minus 1 plus x plus 1 times x minus 1. Start simplifying this out. So 2x squared minus x squared, negative x times negative 1 is positive x. This is a difference of squares. That's going to be x squared plus 1, minus 1, sorry. It's like we have negative x squared, positive x squared. And put 2x squared plus x minus 1 over x squared times x minus 1 squared. And then I want to check to see if the numerator factors. 
Well, if it did, it would have to start with 2x and x. The last numbers have to multiply to negative 1, so it's only 1 and 1. And to get a positive 2x, if I make this plus 1, minus 1, that gives me positive 2x minus 1x would give me a plus x. And you can see nothing's going to cancel that. It's really close. If that was an x minus 1, I could have divided something up. So you could either leave it, I mean, now that you know nothing's going to cancel, you could take it back to here. Since we took the time to factor it, we might as well leave it there. Generally speaking, if you can factor it, even if it doesn't cancel, you'd probably be better off leaving it in factored form. Okay. Different looking, but also very similar. There's this idea of compound fractions. These are essentially fractions that have fractions as part of them, part in the numerator, part in the denominator. And so to simplify these, that would be the directions. What would seem to be logical. Now remember, okay, before we do any math here, remember that you can only, what's the rule about dividing two fractions? Dividing two fractions, for example, two thirds divided by five sevenths, we've talked about you really in reality are multiplying top and bottom by the reciprocal of the denominator. But what it really boils down to is you change that to two thirds times the reciprocal seven fifths. That's how we divide two fractions, but I see more than two fractions here, right? Uh, especially if we consider that x is really x over one. I see four fractions here. We can't, there's, there's no, that, that's not what this rule says. It, we have to get a fraction over a fraction. So what that means is we need to use some algebra to combine these two fractions in the top and the same two in the bottom. So to do that, now the common denominator is hopefully easy to see. If I have one and x plus one, my common denominator is, for the numerator is x plus one. So I'm going to multiply this one top and bottom by x plus one. I gotta remember there was a minus sign in between there. And for the denominator, the lowest common denominator is this times this. So this one will get multiplied by top and bottom by x plus one minus, this will get multiplied top and bottom by x minus one. So I'm gonna have in the numerator, my denominator is x plus one, and I have x times x plus one, which if I distribute, is x squared plus x minus 2 over the denominators. Fractions have a common denominator of x plus 1, x minus 1. And what do I have in the numerator? I have x squared plus x minus. OK, and this is tricky. This minus sign is minus the whole thing. It's really that minus gets distributed. It's really minus x plus 1. So then, and these would, it looks like these cancel, doesn't it? So then we could, we have a fraction over a fraction. Now we can flip and multiply. So we have x squared plus x minus 2 over x plus 1 times that by the reciprocal of, of the denominator, which is going to be x plus 1 x minus 1 over what's left over here, which was just x squared plus 1. We have a common factor of x plus 1. And to see if we can get any more things to divide out, let's factor. This looks like something we can factor. Um, this is now x plus 2x minus 1. OK, let's make a fraction of this. That's this right here. That's going to get multiplied by another x minus 1. Now, when this divided out, remember, we're, that's, we're saying that's 1 over 1. That's just 1. So I, my denominator here is x squared plus 1. And if you recall, this is a sum of two squares, and that does not factor. You can't break that down anymore. So this is as far as I can go. Probably, if this was on some kind of a assessment test or whatever, a multiple choice test, they would probably list the answer, though, as x plus 2. If I have x minus 1 times x minus 1, then I could write that as x minus 1 squared over x squared plus 
That's what a compound fraction is. Now, this one could be a little bit tricky here. There's a very common mistake. You could probably imagine it's somebody making this. It's pretty easy. We know that generally when we see something like x to the negative one, we want to bring it to the denominator. And, and this, if it's a negative two here, you usually want to bring that to the numerator, but we can't. And that's because this x minus one is tied to this x. So they're, they're subtracting each other. You can only do that if it was just that. You could, of course, move this up, move this down. So what we need to do, this is really x minus, what is x to the negative one? It's one over x. And in my denominator, what do I have is I have one minus x to the negative two is one over x squared. And you can see that that looks like the problem we just did. That's a compound fraction. So what we wanna do is combine these. So think of this as over one. My common denominator would be x, so I'm gonna multiply this one top and bottom by x. For this one, if I think of this as over one, here I wanna multiply top and bottom. You see me, when I multiply top and bottom, I sometimes try to sneak it in here, but you can put that anywhere. I need to multiply this one top and bottom by x squared. I'm gonna put it on the left side. Doesn't really matter. So then I have x times x is x squared minus one all divided by x over x squared minus one, huh. but this time divided by x squared. Dividing this fraction by this fraction, I'm gonna flip and multiply. I'm gonna times that by x squared over x squared minus one. Now you can even, you know that factors, but there's no reason to factor because I'm gonna have the same thing there and the same thing there. And then that leaves me with just x squared over x, which is just, this is x squared divided by x to the first is just x to the two minus one. It's just x to the first or just x. Okay, last problem here. And okay, why are we studying these compound fractions? This next problem we're doing, actually when you get to calculus, you're going to be simplifying something like this when you do something we call the derivative in calculus. You have to simplify an expression like this. Um, you know, just kind of a note about like, why are we doing all of this? The, the thing about calculus is it's not the calculus that gets in the way most of the time for people. It's the algebra. And it's, it's sometimes, you know, not simple algebra like this. You have to deal with this compound fraction. Okay, so anyhow... What we'd want to do, okay, first of all, let's think of this when you divide by h, that's the same as h over one, okay? So I do have just one fraction in the denominator, but I have these two in the numerator, which I need to combine. x plus h and x, these are different denominators, right? So I'm gonna multiply this one top and bottom by x, this one top and bottom by x plus h, so that I get the same denominator. That's my lowest common denominator, is x times x plus h. So then I have one X minus, again, watch out, that minus one gets distributed. So it's minus X minus H over the same denominator. I'm gonna put the X first, X times X plus H. And this whole thing is divided by one over H. I'm sorry, not one over H. It's divided by H over one. Might as well cancel out those x. Is so. What do I have? Is I have negative h over x plus h. Now, rather than write divided by h over one, what if that's the same as multiplying by one over h? Multiply by the reciprocal, and we see that we can cancel out the h's, leaving me with a negative one over x times x plus h. That's as far as we can go. All right, uh, hopefully this makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions or if you see if I made any mistakes, I'd like to know that. Thank you. All right, thanks.